just gone eight quarter past three. Now, one of the largest open access arts festivals in the country is returning to Derbyshire this summer. The Buxton Fringe Festival already has more than 60 acts sign up. And I spoke to the chair of the festival, Keith Savage, earlier uh, to find out what else was going off. Here we are, coming towards the end of the second early bird deadline. And you've got a hit on your hands again, haven't you? Well, we hope so. Um, it's even though we've been open for entries for all three and a half months now, we've probably only got about half or less than half of the final programme in yet, um, despite our efforts to encourage people to enter early. Many people make decisions fairly late on, so we've still got a, a bit to come. But uh, th yes, there's a lot of exciting stuff already. And one of the things that we're uh, quite most excited about, I guess, is that the, the number of venues beyond and outside of Buxton that we have this year. So whilst it's called the Buxton uh, Festival Fringe, we've got shows dotted around towns and villages. Uh, and this just this week, uh, the Cat and Fiddle pub up on the, uh, on the road to Macclesfield mm. has uh, opened up as a fringe venue. So that will be uh, quite exciting to have uh, things going on there. Does this mean you've got to get on your bike then during the festival? <laughs> <laughs> You, I'm not, not going to dwell on bad news. But you won't catch me on a bike. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that to other people. But it, no, it's always great to to draw in uh, communities beyond the town because uh, although Buxton's not that big a town, there are many small towns and villages around and about us that c contribute a lot to the arts all through the year. So we've got shows at, at New Mills, for example. Um, there's a couple of halls in Taddington which uh, I hope to put on events and Shell Morton, which is a small village just uh, about four miles to the south of the town, they're running their own mini festival as part of the Fringe Festival. Um, so that, 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 that will be exciting things, I think. But the great thing is it shows a connection between the community, doesn't it? Well, I think that's uh, one, of the, one of the things about the, the high peak, because, <clears throat> because geographically we're, we're a little bit isolated at times, it means that people do sort of bond in, in, in different ways and, and do work together. Um, I mean, a couple of other examples of, of how that looks like it's going to happen for the Fringe this year. We had a, a young student from, well, she's actually based in Ashbourne, but she's, um, uh, she's come to us and says well, she'd like to be our photographer in residence for the, for the duration of the Fringe. Uh, which we've never had that before. We had people that have you know, been very kind and taken photographs at different specialist events and so on. But Lily, she hopes to be with us for most of the 19 days, um, getting in into venues to get to, to get behind the scenes to some extent and get a much fuller record of what of what goes on. So that I mean that works for both of us. It works for the fringe because we get that record of what we're doing. Uh, and it also means that for, for young people they get a chance to do some work experience. And when they apply for university, when they apply for jobs, they can produce evidence of how they've worked for a major arts festival and what they've contributed. So it, it, it's an example, I, I guess, of how we, we can share our experience and, uh, and work with other people, yes. She's the one that's going to get fit then during the festival, <laughs> isn't she? <laughs> well, especially if she's cycling up to the cat and fiddle every day. <laughs> Have you got highlights already, or, or don't you like to pin well, your, your colours to the mask? Well, I try, I try not to, but there's always, I mean, one of the nice things about the Fringe is there's a, a, quite a lot of people that come back to perform year after year, which I guess is the best evidence we've got that people enjoy it and like to do it. So I'm always pleased to see some of those people returning. So without picking out too many, I mean, there's a, an early music consort from Manchester called Partita. I think they're back for their 21st Fringe in a row. <clears throat> that's always nice to see and they're, they're, they're brilliant musicians as well uh, in a slightly different vein we've uh, a couple of years back there was an, an all women Shakespeare company called the smooth faced gentlemen they did a, a production of Titus Andronicus which is really very very good excellent production and they're coming back with that to, again this year so that's that's something we're looking forward to um, but there are some new things as well we've got some um, drummers from Soweto that's going to be very different as far as the rest of the fringe goes. We've got a couple of dancers coming over from Japan, and there's uh, quite a few events taking place at the clubhouse pub just over the road from the opera house, including New Orleans jazz and uh, and, and things of that sort. So we've got a, a good old mixture of stuff. Poetry is a poetry trail going through the woods at, at, at Grinlow behind Buxton, 
and we had a few years ago an arts trail uh, which was in about 40 different venues, people's houses, restaurants, cafes and whatnot, and that's coming back for a weekend this year. So even before we get the other half of the uh, programme in, we've got plenty for people to uh, look forward to. 25 past three, Andy Potter on BBC Radio Derby. I've been talking to the chair of the Buxton Fringe Festival, Keith Savage, about the, the second of the, the closing dates, the early closing dates for acts that want to be a part of the festival, which runs from the 8th of July through to the 26th of July. But when the festival is on in Buxton, not only does it change how you hear things and how you see things, but the actual colour of Buxton changes as well. Uh, well, uh, when we open up on the, well, on July the 8th, it is this year, I, I go down to town and, and, and the whole place has been completely transformed. The day before, I mean, as you know, the fringe colour is orange. Mm. Uh, and the day before the town, I wouldn't say it looks dull, but, it, but it, well, on, on July the 8th, there was all this balloons, bunting, banners all over the place. And every year, I, 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 I partly think, well, where, how did this happen? Where did this come from? Um, so it's always exciting at that stage, yes. And uh, the other thing that you've got, you've got the, the website is up and running already, so people can go to that now as well, can't they? Yes, yes. Um, well, that nev the website never shuts, but we've, uh, we're fortunate that the, uh, we've got a couple of very skilled professionals uh, who give their time voluntarily, and they've um, overhauled the website over the last few months. Uh, we hope uh, it's now easier to, to use. I spent an hour or so going through the website the other day just trying to uh, make sure everything looks as though it worked uh, and I'm pleased to say that it does all work but there's a, a huge quantity of information on there about current events, previous events. Um, this this interview may find its way onto the website eventually so it, 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 there's, you could spend days wandering around the website looking for stuff. So it's been, it's been overhauled, reshaped, reorganised, and we hope that makes it easier for people to find their way around the information that's there. I hope I do find myself on the website. It's my only claim to fame, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, we've got the second early bird deadline looming. It's on the 31st of March. So basically what we're saying to people is, if you want to save some money and perform, get in now, aren't you? Well, yes. I, and the other, I mean, yes, you'll save yourself a little bit of money, but the possibly just as important, you'll get on the website that little bit earlier because when there's a, there's bound to be 50 entries arrive in the last week mm. uh so when people start trying to see what's happening there's it it's, it's updated almost hourly if you get your entry in now you get a, a month or so of relative peace and quiet when people can go through and look at events uh more in a more leisurely fashion so not only do you get in a bit cheaper you get that bit more exposure as well in terms of uh, what people see on the website no names and no pack drill, but are some companies or some performers, or are they always the late ones to come along? Uh, well, the, for some people, they, they, it's, a, it, it's a difficult decision because they, if they're working on a new play or new material, they've got to be confident that they will be ready for July. And uh, sometimes it, be, it just becomes evident that either they haven't got enough rehearsal time, if they're trying to raise funding to get to, to, to pay for their costs, accommodation and travel and so on. It, it just sometimes happens that people have to make their decision late on when they know that they can do it because no one wants to enter and then find they have to cancel. So there, there are always some people that, for, for good reasons, make their decision at the last minute more or less. And I know this is a creative environment, but what does it bring to Buxton financially? This is, this is huge for Buxton, isn't it? Uh, we, we we try to 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 quantify the the value to, to the town, and it's it's always difficult to do. It, it, I mean, the fringe on its own is is probably worth over three hundred thousand pounds to the local economy um, over a period of a couple of weeks, three weeks, um, and because the money most of that money is spent in local hotels, local restaurants. Uh, clubs and pubs and so on, that money stays for, for a bit longer in the local economy and gets recycled, I guess. So it, it, it's, there's a sort of a multiplier effect there. So it, it, in terms of the impact on, on the town economy and the, and the towns and villages around about, it's, it's probably worth over a half a million pounds, which is OK in, in, for a, a city like Derby. That doesn't sound like very much, but for a town like Buxton, that's not insignificant. And for somebody who's the chair of the festival, you ever performed in the festival yourself? Uh, not what you'd call perform, I don't think. I mean, uh, the closest I got, I think, last year was um, 
uh, we, the previous year, Buxton had been nominated for the great, a great town award, and one of the things we got for that was a, a poem by uh, the Barnsley poet uh, Ian Macmillan. Well, uh, the closest I got to performing was reading that poem out um, from the bandstand during our uh, Fringe Sunday party in the park at the first week of the Fringe. So that's hardly performance, but at, le at least I've. Um, put my head on the block for a bit. <laughs> oh, we'll have to work something out that you can do and make sure you're a part of it this year. I can't, I can't do very much, Andy, <laughs> which, is, which is why I do other stuff. Listen, it's, as always, it's great talking to you. Give me the address of that website again. Uh, Buxtonfringe.org.uk okay, All the details are in there. And, of course, uh, we will speak to you again just before it launches. All right. I look forward to that. Many thanks. <laughs>